If you haven't uh, figured it out by the time you all are watching this, although I'm recording it ahead of time, uh, it's Halloween today. Um, and so I figured today might be a nice day to do a little bit of something uh, to basically talk about all the treats that have resulted from science or, well, not all of them, but many of the greatest things that have resulted from science that make life what it is today. So a little bit of a special episode, the treats of science. Let's go. Okay, so there's been, of course, um, if you've watched this channel, you've, you've heard many times about how I have um, talked about the distrust of science that has grown in the last few years, amongst other things. And um, it's certainly, it's certainly um, at times justified, um, for sure, when scientists get into putting their own political agendas into things or become more activists than scientists. I can understand that and frustration, what have you. Um, but what I am also more concerned about is the, uh, sort of tendency to basically, basically, um, run science into the ground as being, um, being an ill, but, um, consider all of the other great things that have happened. So, uh, this comes from Popular Mechanics, uh, it's certainly not the only thing, and it was written last year, but, uh, the most famous inventions the past 69 years have given us. Um, and you can think about these things because a lot of them, uh, you may not realize, but they also have <laughs> pretty profound impact on modern life and things you wouldn't imagine not having, um, available to society in the United States or in Europe or, um, or basically worldwide really, um, today. So <clears throat> most famous inventions the past 69 years have given us between the 1950s and today, scientific and technological innovations have revolutionized the lives we lead from the hospital to outer space to the kitchen. These are the most impactful inventions of our time. On any normal day, you might buckle your seatbelt, get cash from an ATM or check the news on your cell phone. Chances are these things feel unremarkable, but it wasn't so long ago that each would have been utterly unthinkable. Thanks to the more than six and a half decades of remarkable scientific and technological innovation, 2022 looks very little like 1954. From Velcro to virtual reality, LEDs to Facebook, these are the 69 most life-changing and famous inventions of our time. Uh, you guys ever done something in a microwave? First one up, the microwave oven. <laughs> Have you done have you done stuff where you just pop it in the microwave and heat it up because you don't want to cook because you're lazy getting home? You probably think that's unremarkable. That was actually a pretty damn remarkable thing in 1954. In 1945, Raytheon's Piercy Spencer stands in front of a magnetron, the power tube of radar, and feels a candy bar start to melt in his pocket. He is intrigued. When he places popcorn kernels in front of the magnetron, the kernels explode all over the lab. First case of microwave pop popcorn. Ten years later, Spencer patents radar range that cooks the, with high-frequency radio waves. The same year, the Tap and Stove Company introduces the first home microwave model. There you go. The polio vaccine. Those of you who don't remember, during, during World War II in particular, polio was a really horrific disease. And courtesy of this vaccine, it... Um, it is all but gone in the world today. The year Jonas Salk finds a way to prevent polio, there are 28,985 cases by 2021. The number drops to six, all but eradicated. Honorable mentions during uh, 1955, Velcro and the TV remote control. Right? 1956, so many things would not be possible without this. The hard drive for computers. <laughs> But the spinning disk that predates the uh, the modern solid, modern solid state drives um, here in 1956 would have been unthinkable at the time. IBM releases the first computer hard disk drive, the 2,000 pound plus refrigerator sized IBM 305 RAM AC, which introduces magnetic disk storage. Up until then, the files were either kept on spools of magnetic tape or on good old fashioned paper. Uh, with no way to jump right to the record you wanted to pull up. With the RAM AC, a mechanical arm would retrieve data by storing data at a particular magnetic orientation. This technology goes on to be used at smaller sizes in laptops and computer servers everywhere. So yeah, back in the day, computers were giant things that filled room. 
today? What do you have? You got a computer in your pocket, right? <laughs> you got a computer in your pocket with your smartphone. Think about that because that kind of thing happened because of science. Scientific innovation, I should say. The birth control pill. Enovid, 1957. Enovid, a drug the FDA approves for menstrual disorders, comes with a warning. The mixture of synthetic progesterone and estrogen also prevents ovulation. Two years later, more than half a million American women are taking Enovid. Not all of them have cramps. In 1960, the FDA approves Enovid for use as the first oral contraceptive. Honorable invention uh, mention from 1957, the three-point seatbelt. You know that seatbelt in your car? If you wear it and it saves your life in a car accident, as it has for members of my family, there you go. Oh, it's a 1957, an invention of science. 1958, the Jet Airliner. Mm-hmm. The Boeing 707-120 debuts as the world's mo first successful commercial jet airliner, ushering in an era of accessible mass air travel. The four-engine plane carries 181 passengers and cruises at 600 miles per hour for up to 5,280 miles on a full tank. The first commercial jet flight takes off from New York and lands in Paris. Domestic service soon connects New York and Los Angeles. So there you go. Of course... One of the things that is great inventions of science and physics in particular is the airplane. You could not get from, you know, thanks, thanks to that, you can get from one side of the United States to the other in less than a day. Um, it's like a five-hour flight from one side of the country to the other. And that's pretty damn awesome. If you did that in the past, you would take months and months and months to go with a horse and cart. The Integrated Circuit in 1959 First general purpose computer, the nearly 30-ton ENIAC, 1947, contains 18,000 vacuum tubes, 70,000 resistors, and 10,000 capacitors. In 1959, the integrated circuit puts those innards in one tiny chip. In other words, those little circuit board chips that you might find in your smartphone now, or in most computers now. Those little circuit board chips. Again, 1959. 1960, the pacemaker. Ew. Ugly photo, but um, in 1956, Wilson Greatbach grabs the wrong resistor and connects it to a device he is building to record heartbeats. When the circuit emits a pulse, he realizes the device can be used to control the beat. In 1960, the first pacemaker is successfully implanted in a human. And I will admit, pacemakers are wonderful devices. There are actually lots of heart conditions that can be really helpful. My grandmother had a pacemaker for a while before she passed away. Um, I uh, know a few, few friends who have pacemakers and if it were not for said pacemakers, um, they would not be living. So this is a really powerful invention. Again, all of science. 1961 cordless tools, black and Decker, you know, you got your cordless drills, things like that. That would have been back, back 50 odd years ago. You never would have thought of it. They're kind of ubiquitous now. Black and Decker releases its first cordless drill, but designers can't coax more than 20 watts from the in, from its NSID batteries. Instead, they try strive for efficiency, modifying gear ratios and using better materials. The revolutionary results put power in the hands of DIYers thanks to a NASA contract, the Gloves of Astronauts, and thanks to a NASA contract, the Gloves of Astronauts. The industrial robot also came to be around the same time with carbon fiber composites. Also there, too, as a notable invention. Um, and I will say with this, you're going to find a lot of things actually connect back to NASA. Because a lot of things they needed to invent to make space travel possible ended up to make our modern conveniences also. 1962, none other than the satellite. Think of GPS. Think of communications across the world. Think of all this kind of stuff. It wouldn't have happened without the satellite. Telstar launched, is launched as the first active communication satellite, active as in amplifying and retransmitting incoming signals rather than passively bouncing them back to Earth. Telstar makes a, real a 1945 concept by science fiction author, author Arthur C. Clarke, who envisioned a global communications network based on geosynchronous satellites. Two weeks after Telstar's debut, President Kennedy holds a press conference in Washington, D.C. that is broadcast live across the Atlantic. The computer mouse, the LED, and video games also make their debuts in 1962. The Sketchpad Program. 1963, Ivan Sutherland, the father of computer graphics, revolutionized 3D computer modeling and simulation when he created the Sketchpad Program. 
as the earliest iteration of a computer-aided design CAD program, Sketchpad pioneered the use of geometric constraints, fixing the length of a line or an angle between two segments. It was also one of the first programs that used a graphical user interface. GUI, in other words. And basically, if you're using anything that does some kind of computing, like Microsoft or Cell or anything like that, um, or does a calculation or fixes something, you're using something that's a graphical user interface. You're not typing it on a command line. This is a this is extremely common, the GUI things now, extremely, extremely common. As opposed to a text-based one, if you're reading this on a computer without knowing a single line of code, you can thank Sutherland and Sketchpad. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing as if you're watching this on the internet right now. You can owe them a little bit. Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, 1964. Kevlar, 1965. Thanks to DuPont's Stephanie Kowalik and Herbert Blades, who in 1965 invented a high-strength polymer called Kevlar, the body armor of over 3,000 police officers has protected them from fatal attacks. Yep. Of course, drones we have. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, 1966, high-yield rice. International Rice Research in the Philippines released a semi-dwarf high-yield indica variety in conjunction with high-yield wheat that ushers in the Green Revolution. Indica rice thrives in tropical regions of Asia and South America, raising worldwide production more than 20% 20, 20 by 1970. Science makes agricultural innovations possible. 1967 coronary bypass surgery. So if you've had that heart bypass surgery, that was when that first came to be. Um, and I know a couple of members of my family who have had it also. Uh, Rene Favaloro performs the first coronary bypass surgery in 1967, taking a length of vein from a leg and grafting it onto a coronary artery. This allows blood to flow around the block section. Thanks in part to these advances, the number of deaths from heart disease declines in the U.S. by almost 50%. 1968 Integrated Computer Systems in a landmark December 1968 demonstration, later known as the mother of all demos, engineer Douglas Engelbart illustrates the use of lots of recent technologies in conjunction with each other, including on-screen windows, hypertext, graphics, file linking, revision control, video conferencing, the computer mouse, and word processing. Both Mac and Windows users' interfaces will borrow heavily from the example set here. You're running on a Mac, you're running on Windows, and to a certain degree Linux also. You owe it to... Mr. Engelbart, and to a lot of science. ARPANET, uh, 1969, before the entire world is networked, there is ARPANET, four computers linked in 1969. It introduces the concept of packet switching, which simultaneously delivers messages as short units and reassembles them at their destinations. Made a lot of modern communications extremely possible also. Uh, smoke detectors um, and the ATM also made their appearances in 1969. Uh, 1970, fiber optics. The term fiber optic is coined in 1956, but it wasn't until 1970 that scientists at Corning produce a fiber of ultra-pure glass that transmit light well enough to be used for telecommunications. Indeed, if you're doing communications, a lot of it is with fiber optics now. It wasn't way back when. 71, the waffle solo running shoes. <laughs> Running shoes, these uh, these are basically the precursors to your Nike tennis shoes, your sneakers, if you're wearing them. You even owe your sneakers to science. Electronic ignition in 1972. Chrysler paves the way for the era of electronic rather than mechanical advances in automobiles with the electronic ignition. It leads to the electronic control of ignition timing and fuel metering, harbingers of more sophisticated systems to come. Today, these include electronic control transmission, shift points, anti-lock brakes, traction control systems, steering, and airbag deployment. All those little safety gadgets you have in your car, they are courtesy, very much so, of the era of electronic ignition as in 1972. 1973, the MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Brilliant invention. No one agrees exactly who invented it um, in this case, but... It was the kind of, it, MRIs are so, so much used now in determining diseases and figuring out certain things and what have you, um, that they are very, very widely known. So, um, back in 1973, it was the first time they were able to discern healthy tissue from cancer cells actually using an MRI machine. 1974, the barcode. All those things that make actually selling stuff so much easier too. 
Uh, ten pack of Wrigley's chew, Juicy Fruit Chewing Gum is the first product to integrate the usage of barcode technology when it's scanned at a grocery store in Ohio. The codes become the industry standard for store pricing, uh, storing pricing information at grocery stores, and expand rapidly for both consumer-facing and internal tracking applications. Um, <clears throat> 1976, the supercomputer. The Cray-1, the first commercially developed supercomputer, is installed in the Los Alamos National Laboratory. It's the first supercomputer to successfully implement vector processors, a system that allows operation, a single operation to be performed on a large set of data, which is reflected in its speed of 160 mflops, or 160 million floating point calculations per second. The Summit computer, which went online at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in 2018, is capable of 143.5 petaflops. I will say there's actually a newer one at Oak Ridge now that surpasses that. I forget the name of it. I think it's the Frontier computer system. But anyway. 1977, none other than the personal computer. Your personal computer, the desktop, uh, the laptop, things like that, they all owe their oranges, origins to 1977. In the Apple II, Commodore PET, and Radio Shack's TRS-80 are introduced in 1977, four years before IBM, soon to become synonymous with the term PC, unveils its personal computer. 1978, GPS. So many things would be impossible right now without GPS. The first satellite in the modern Navistar global positioning system is launched. The GPS's precursor, Transit, was developed in the early 1960s to guide nuclear subs. But it's not until the year 2000, though, that President Clinton grants non-military users access to an unscrambled GPS signal. Now, cheap handheld GPS units can determine a person's location to within three yards. Uh, genetic engineering and in, virtu in vitro fertilization are also in honorable mentions. The Sony Walkman. Think of Home Alone. Cobalt oxide cathodes of 1980. Now, why is this why is this so important? Well, those lithium-ion batteries. Think again of your phone, your tablet, those kinds of things. You couldn't have them without this particular invention, courtesy of science. John Bannister Goodenough invents the cobalt oxide cathode, a crucial component of lithium-ion batteries, the rechargeable and portable batteries that are now in every smartphone, laptop, and electric vehicle. In 2017, the 94-year-old Goodenough, apparently deciding that this that his last invention wasn't good enough, announces that he's come up with a new glass-based battery with even better storage capacity. The scanning tunnel microscope. That's one that I don't even know what that is. By moving the needle of a scanning tunnel microscope across a surface and monitoring the electric current that flows through it, scientists can map the surface to the level of single atoms. Damn. The SCM is so precise that it not only looks at atoms, but it can also manipulate them into structures. The microscope's development earns, earns IBM researchers Gerd Binning and Heinrich Rohrer a Nobel Prize and helps them launch the emerging era of nanotechnology. <laughs> Here we go. 1982, the bad things, the computer virus. 15-year-old Rick Schrenta creates an application called Elk Cloner as a, plank, as a prank and ends up creating the first virus to spread outside its home network. Elk Cloner spreads a sp spreads a via floppy disk and attaches to the Apple OS 2 operating system. When users boot the disk, Elk Cloner transfers the computer memory. Any additional disks inserted without rebooting, rebooting are also infected. On every 50th boot, the computer displays text written by Schrenta. The program with a personality, it will get your disks, it will infiltrate your strips. Yes, it's a cloner, it will stick you like glue, and it will modify your RAM to send in the cloner. Yay, the first computer virus. That might be one we would want to get rid of. It might be more trick than treat, but... <clears throat> might have been the first hack. 1983, some of us probably would consider this the bane of our existence. Microsoft Word. In particular, DNA fingerprinting in 1984. Polymerase chain reactions in 1985. Biochemist Carrie Mullis invents a technology that exploits enzymes in order to make millions of copies of a tiny scrap of DNA quickly and cheaply. No matter how small or dried out a blood stain is, forensic scientists can now gather enough genetic material to do DNA fingerprinting. With PCR, doctors can also search for trace amounts of HIV genetic code to diagnose infection much sooner than critical uh, than con conventional methods. So. <coughs> Here's a uh, 
here's a really great thing that is both for forensics and criminal justice, but also for medicine. The email list, 1986. Eric Thompson develops the listserv, first automated mailing list management application. Before 1986, people had to manually add uh, add or remove from a mailing list. My 2010 email newsletters are ubiquitous. Prozac, 1987. Prozac becomes the first new FDA-approved antidepressants called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which block the reabsorption of mood-elevating neurotransmitter serotonin, thereby prolonging its effect. Though at times controversial, Prozac helps patients uh, cope with clinical depression, reshaping our understanding of how personality and emotion can be chemically controlled. We talked about that. 1988, the Internet Virus. Graduate student Robert Morris illustrates the vulnerabilities of in remotely connected networks, uh, remotely connected computers, with the release of his virus known as the Morris worm on November 2nd. As opposed to Rich, Rich Scarenta's uh, elk cloner, the worm doesn't require any sort of hardware for transfer. While Morris says it's just an exercise to gauge the size of the internet, computers that are affected mul- infected multiple times slow down considerably. <coughs> Within the first 15 hours, 2,000 computers are infected, many of them unsalvageable. Morris becomes the first person to be tried and convicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1984. Caller ID gets the honorable mention in 1988. 1989, our favorite thing here, as we're talking through it right now, the internet. 1989, Sir Tom, Tim Benners-Lee creates hypermarka, Hypertext Markup Language, HTML, to make web pages and the Uniform Resource Locator to identify where information is stored. These breakthroughs form the foundation of the World Wide Web, otherwise known as the Internet. 1980, 1990, Adobe Photoshop comes to be. Today, there are thousands of apps that make our digital lives easier, but none are quite as useful as Photoshop. First developed in 1987, the mega-popular photo editing software wouldn't release its first commercial version until 1990. 1991, Linux comes to be, for those who are looking for an alternative. 1992, the IBM Simon. On November 23, 1992, IBM debuted a weird little prototype at Comdex in Las Vegas, Nevada. Although it wouldn't be sold in the U.S. until 1994, IBM Simon Simon proved a commercial failure. But really, the idea was just way ahead of its time, as many people considered Simon to be the world's first smartphone. There you go. The fuel cell vehicle of 1993. The fuel cell goes back more than 150 years, and the first fuel cell vehicle, a 20 HP tractor, is built in 1959. But it isn't until 1993 that a Canadian company, Ballard Power Systems, demonstrates the first zero-emissions fuel cell bus. Since then, progress toward an economically viable fuel cell car has remained slow but steady. Fuel cells are actually something I'm a little bit more intrigued in with when it comes to vehicles and environmentally related stuff than, um, than the electric cars. You're actually seeing, more, um, seeing some interesting things with hydrogen fuel cells, but that's a topic for another day. 1994, the RQ Predator drone. So the first drones used in war, really. Um, The idea for the RQ Predator drone came in the 1980s, but its first test flight wouldn't be until 1994 in the Mojave Desert. Since then, the drone has increasingly integrated in the U.S. military and forever altering how humans fight wars. In 2002, the drone received its MQ designation, standing for multi-role, to denote its armed capabilities beyond just passive reconnaissance. This is one of the first instances of machines fighting wars in place of humans. Critics say the Predator drone causes innocent death and collateral damage through faulty intelligence, and proponents say drones are much more accurate compared to conventional artillery weapons that have an average miss distance of 800 feet. But off the battlefield, the Predator drone also remains an impressive example of what other kinds of unmanned aerial bots can do, with some experts saying it was responsible for kickstarting our fascination with drones, whether for delivering packages or as our new favorite pastime. In many ways, the Predator's influence on our lives has yet to be fully recognized. HIV protease inhibitors, in the, in the ways to help uh, protect HIV patients. 1996, the DVD. Although DVD only lives on today through its ancestor, uh, through its descendant, rather, not its ancestor. Boy, that's, that's, a, that's a bad typo, popular mechanics. Uh, A technology being slowly consumed by online streaming that is also happening. Unfortunately, DVDs and Blu-ray are probably going to go extinct. 
Uh, the DVD was a massive step forward as a medium of choice in home entertainment and data storage due to its high capacity compared to other formats. The first DVD players went on sale in Japan in November, on November 1st, 1996. 1997, the hybrid car. Ferdinand Porsche wins his class at the 1902 Exelborg Hill Climb in Austria in a front-wheel drive hybrid electric car. But it is almost a century later, in 1997, that Toyota surprises its rivals by unveiling the hybrid Prius to Japanese customers. It takes nearly three years for the Prius to reach North America. 1998, the International Space Station. On November 20th, 1998, the functional cargo block, a.k.a. Zarya, launched into space as the first piece of what would eventually become the International Space Station. Home of countless experiments and a shining example of international cooperation, the ISS is a testament to what humanity can achieve when we work together. Bluetooth version 1, 1999. Named after 10th century Danish King Her- King Harold Bluetooth Gormson. Seriously? Seriously. I did not know that. Named for a Danish king. We named this technology... Why did we name this technology for a Danish king? Anyway. Bluetooth can now be found packed inside almost every conceivable gadget we own and will be a major player in the unfolding future of the smartphone. Bluetooth's first version was released on July 26, 1999, and while it would take a decade or two to iron out the kinks, it helped us imagine a future free of needless wires. The PlayStation 2. In 2000. Wikipedia in 2001. The IEEE 802.16, which if you're wondering what this is, that is Wi-Fi. The geniuses at the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers published a wireless metropolitan area network standard that functions like Wi-Fi on steroids. An 802.16 antenna can transmit internet access up to a 30-mile radius at speeds comparable to DSL and cable broadband. When it all shakes out, 802.16 could end up launching developing nations into the digital aid by eliminating the need for wired tele- telecommunications and infrastructure. So in other words, public Wi-Fi. Right there. The Human Genome Project in 2003. Officially completed on April 14th, 2003, the Human Genome Project formed a foundation for com- understanding of understanding for creating further advances in future medicine and a better comprehension of where we come from. The fact that it's available online just makes it all the more incredible. 2004, Facebook. 2005, Google Maps. 2006, the Nintendo Wii. 2007, none other than the iPhone. Steve Jobs introduces Apple's first smartphone with a prank call order of 4,000 lattes from a nearby Starbucks. That's an interesting way to introduce it. But anyway, the iPhone is also the first U.S. smartphone without a physical keypad and goes on to become best-selling ga- the best-selling gadget ever with more than $2.2 billion sold to date and drives the development of app-based companies like Uber, Venmo, Tinder, Snapchat, and Postmates, which in- will indeed deliver Starbucks. 2008, far more interesting to me if you ask, uh, the Large Hadron Collider. Ten years in the making at the European Organization for Energy Research, the LHC opens in 2008 as the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, capable of propelling energy beams at close to the speed of light. In 2012, tests at the LHC will reveal evidence of the Higgs boson, a subatomic particle believed to be instrumental in creating mass, and therefore one of the building blocks of the universe. Peter Higgs, the particle's namesake, who disapproves of it being nicknamed the God Particle, wins the 2013 Nobel Prize in Physics for the Advancement in Scientific Understanding of the Properties of Matter. 2009, Bitcoin comes to be. 2010, Siri on the Apple smartphone. 2011, the Curiosity Rover, courtesy of NASA. The Curiosity launches from Cape Canaveral in November 2011, landing on Mars the following August, an event made iconic by the meme-worthy haircut of flight director and later popular mechanics contributor, Bobek Ferdowski. The rover's goal is to investigate environmental conditions on Mars and determine whether it would be possible, uh, whether it would be suitable for microbial and thus perhaps human life. It is the most advanced rover ever to land on Mars and can collect de- detailed imagery and environmental samples to analyze and send back to Earth. Now, I will say this has been updated because Curiosity is not up there anymore. It is the Perseverance rover that was actually launched in 2020. 2020 or 2021, I forget. Google's machine learning project in 2012, 2013, the Atlas robot, one of these kinds of first 
from Atomic Robux. 2014, the Hemo Purifier. In 2014, the world came to grips with, with the seriousness of the West African Ebola virus epidemic. It's a story of incredible bravery on behalf of many who battled the disease, but one little device arrived at just the right time to help out with the cause, the Hemo Purifier. With time listing the device as one of the best inventions of 2014, the magazine says the device works by specifically by using a specifically designed cartridge that attaches to a dialysis machine, essentially sucking the Ebola virus from the blood. The device also works to combat hepatitis and cancer. The Ebola virus is extremely nasty. It has, it has something upwards of 50% mortality rate. It's extremely deadly. So all the more, all the more good reason to not have that. 2015, reusable rockets. Mm -hmm. 2019, uh, 2016, the Oculus Rift. So if you're looking at those virtual reality headsets, they came to be in 2016. Uh, 2017, the Tesla Model 3. Elon Musk's CV company makes its biggest move towards mainstream by commencing production on the Model 3, an all-electric car with a 310-mile range and an anticipated every-man price of $35,000. Despite production lays and subsequent, one, uh, subsequent run of pre-orders, by Q quarter 3 of 2018, the Model 3 is the best-selling car in the U.S. by revenue. 2018, Metal 3D Printing. 2019, the E-Dumper. Electric Vehicle Dump Truck as it were. 2020, the COVID vaccine. 21! 2021, the malaria vaccine. Malaria's been around a lot longer than COVID, but um, here's the more important one. At the end, 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope. We know we're only halfway through 2022, as of the writing of this particular article, that was the case. But the James Webb Telescope is really tough to top. As an infrared telescope, it's more sensitive than its Hubble counterpart, and it's now the largest optical telescope in space. Development began in the mid-90s, and the telescope was launched at the end of 2021. It became fully operational in 2022. The first images were publicly released on July 12th, and they did not disappoint. They even surpassed everyone's expectations. Beyond capturing breathtaking images, the James Webb Telescope will help astronomers conduct research in the deepest corners of space. Now, I show you all this because there's a lot of these great inventions, particularly at the very beginning, that make life possible in our modern society, and it wouldn't be possible. None of them would have been possible without science. That commitment to figuring out what the truth is, to figuring out how the world works, and for a lot of folks involved in science also, inventing things that help make human life better. For the most part, obviously, there were some oddballs in there uh, with the computer virus and the internet virus and what have you. But um, those kinds of things. So remember, there's a lot of great things, treats of science. And yes, I know there are some lousy people doing science. Don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of activists in science right now. But there's also a lot of treats that that wonderful process of science has given us. And that's worth remembering. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit the like button on the way up there or comment on the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Oh, do you have a favorite scientific invention? Drop it in the comments and let me know. Uh, until next time though, I'm Adrian. May you stay curious everybody.